Hey everybody, we decided to make today the kind of video that you usually uh, don't get to see. So you of course see the Mighty Car Mods episodes that come out uh, of us driving around all sorts of little nuggets and four wheel driving and stuff like that. But in between that, there is a whole lot of car shenanigans going on. And so today we got to get this car ready for something that Marty's going to tell you about. And I just thought, you know what, let's just run a camera Show and take people. you with us so you can kind of see what happens in between videos getting done. And because we're so organised, this car is booked to be on an enclosed transport in exactly one hour and 22 minutes. So that's how long we've got to just give it a check over and make sure everything is working. Because this car is going to be transported down to Melbourne, uh, the F1 is on in a couple of days time from when we're filming this. And um, it's been requested to appear down there as part of the festivities and be filmed for some, some people to do skids in it potentially being driven by an F1 driver, which is kind of cool. So we just want to make sure it's actually going to work. Yeah, so this of course is Mod Max. It's our LS powered S15 Sylvia. Uh, by the way, this is also your last chance to get uh, the poster. So the signed um, autograph poster will ship it to you anywhere so cool. in the so world. Cool. Um, artwork done by a friend Justami and the painting by our friend Garth. Um, once they're gone, uh, they're gone forever. So it's strictly limited time. It'll never ever be available ever again. So now's the time. There's a link up there yep. and also a link down below. So. The the job for today is basically get the car ready for someone else to skid, which is not really something that usually happens because we're normally there with it, so when it blows up, we have to tow it. So we just want to uh, check all the fluids. Uh, didn't start this morning. Didn't start uh, this morning. So that was yep. a problem. We're going to pull the security lights off the top of it and de-security it a little bit yep. um, to bring it back to sort of the original Mod Max thing. Because this thing car has been through a lot of variations. You know, It's been the original off-road thing that we built all that time ago, um, and we built it very quickly, like in a weekend. Yep. And then since then, we've you know wide-bodied it and we've now got big um, camber on the front for and more steering lock for drifting. It's also had the diff welded, which actually was a bit transformative on the skid pan. Oh, it was amazing. And it's also not like jacked up anymore, so it was really high before. So yeah, so I'll de-sticker it, take them off, check a bunch of stuff. We need to check Fluids. the fuel pump. Uh, I'm gonna be changing the fuel filter because that's the other thing with this car. It, it only gets shitty fuel because it's just whatever we've got in a jerry can basically for drifting. Other than that, it's kind of stored up. It's obviously not street legal because we're not America. Well, it's written off. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. It's still got a stat write-off sticker on the back. Oh, it does? It does. Where is it? There. Yes, there it is. So that there means that this car can never ever be legally driven on the road um, anyway. But its original like goal, it was built for um, Mad Max Fury Road, so to promote that film when it came out, which is kind of why it looks like this. This here was a shop sign that yes. said Japan Spares, I think, that we got from Ichiban, and we cut that right. um, cut that to, to order. Yep. So uh, anyway, that's basically the plan. Check everything, make sure that it's all good to drive. Um, Marty, I reckon you start on the fuel pump, I'll start on the fuel filter, uh, and then we'll just we'll just kick in and you can come with us. It's not going to be like a normal video, so it's just us getting the job done. Watch your so, face. Ready? Yeah, let's go. Boom. As we said, this thing does get treated to not that nice a fuel, partly because it's stored up and it's hard to always have fresh fuel in it. So that means when using jerry cans, there's, there's usually more crap in them that falls then into your tank, which then gets picked up by the pump, and they just don't like sitting around for a long time. It also sat around with an empty tank for a while, which is our mistake as well. So the pump just would not turn. When we tried to get it in here before, um, it wouldn't turn on. So you can pull the pump out, because a lot of people would go, oh no, my pump's dead. We checked all the wiring, the relay was clicking, it had power down at the plug, but the pump itself wouldn't turn. Uh, so one way to get around that is just to hot wire it, grab a jumper pack, put on the terminals, try and make the pump spin, and actually spun the pump backwards for about five seconds, spun it forwards, and it's been perfect ever since so it's one of those old tricks where you get a hammer out and just whack the pump it's kind of the electronic equivalent of doing that but it now works we're going to give it some fresh fuel uh, and that will mean it's much better position but as a precaution we're also going to change the fuel filter because if there's crap in the tank it will if it makes its way through the um, little filter on the actual pump it will get caught by the fuel filter so it absolutely makes sense to change that so the fuel filter on this is a Ryko Z200 really readily available and it's just a really really simple system that's going to be in one side out the other so if you're modifying your car and you're doing fuel systems and stuff it's a bit of a no-brainer to do that this one here it's located in a really easy to access position so it is easy to change it's not something that people usually change but again because this car's a drift car and it's just constantly in dirt and in crappy environments it makes sense uh, to change it for the you know 15 bucks or whatever that a filter costs it makes sense to actually just swap it out which is what I'm doing so Marty the actual fuse box in this are we now like there are three different like fuse systems, like passenger side, driver side, some of it LS, some of it Sylvia, some of it Haltech. Yeah, because we patched it all together pretty quickly. Um, but no, it's luckily a Sylvia is quite simple. You know what I mean? Like the actual electrical system one, it's quite straightforward. Does it have ignition? Does it have fuel pump? Yes. Okay, go. Just let it go. So the wiring for the engine is actually pretty simple. I think there's only 
six wires going from the ECU to the car. Yeah, right. That's okay. it. Everything else is just engine. It doesn't care because it's super simple. This is out of like an early 2000s Commodore from memory. Like a yeah. VX or something. Big blue like one. It was early. Yeah. Ain't going to mess with that. Uh, so there's not really an easy way to mount this ECU. There's no holes in it. I don't really want to drill holes in the case, which was my first thought, but I'm like, I don't have another ECU to replace this with. So I'm just going to sort of cable tight up out of the way, just because people's feet often end up on them. And it's not so much that that's a problem, but when you're at a track, especially at skid pan, it's wet. People have wet feet, and then the water goes in the wires, and the water goes in the ECU. Sort of stuff you've got to think about with a nugget like this. A drift nugget. A lot of people ask us when we're kind of working on cars, like, how do you decide what to keep and what not to keep? Because, you know, you can end up with... Lots of cars that aren't being used. My attitude is very much like a utilitarian vision of it. Like, if a car can be used, if it has utility, then absolutely keep it. I'm definitely not one of these people that's just interested in stuff sitting around, like just storing up 50 motorbikes in a room somewhere or 50 supercars so that you can look at them. I'm just not into that at all. And even in my studio as well, I've got like a couple of museum piece synthesizers, but I actually use them because... I think like that's what it's meant for, and I think that's what the original people who designed them made them for. And so a car like this, yes, it doesn't have a whole lot of use because it's it's a drift car that makes heaps of noise and shoots flames and stuff. But when people say I actually want to use it and it becomes available um, to actually use on TV campaigns and stuff like that, it's been on TV quite a few times on different commercials. I just think it's great because it's something that we made. Did you say it was almost ten years ago, Marty? Nearly. That was in this project. I think it was 2014. Like, that is insane. And now, all of these years later, it's still getting requested. Uh, it appears in um, super cheap auto stores sometimes. It's appeared in TV commercials for them. Uh, it appears in photo shoots and stuff. So it's just, um, I don't know, I just, I just like to know that something that we've made is still being used. I think anyone probably likes that, anyone that's creating stuff that somehow it's still kind of out there doing its thing. Isn't it funny that once you realise your car's going to be driven by someone else, you make it way better than it was for yourself? Well, this it's is like a... when you're taking your girlfriend out for dinner and you're like, I think I will clean my car and I'll give it a vacuum because someone else is going to be in it. Yeah, but you made an interesting point the other day actually about, um, you know, owning a car for, or, or looking after a car for someone else. It's really stuck with me because, you know, sometimes you get in your, you know, your sh shitty old or the K truck's like that for me because yeah. I look at it and go, oh, like it's one of my favourite vehicles I've ever owned. But it's like mud, there's tip juice everywhere, like a bird shit on it. Like it's because it gets used like every day, basically. Yes. And I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, wait on, I am using it. Like this is what it's for. That's the if utility. I, if I wash it every day and there's never shit on it, and I decide to not take it to the tip because it might get dirty. Who's, who's owning the car? Yeah, yeah. Not me, the next person. Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem with brand new cars. People are like, you can't drive it, you can't park it under a tree. And that's the thing that always, yeah. it first occurred to me when people would, um, I met someone and they put a car bra on the front of the car, like a thing to protect yeah. the front of their car. Yeah. And, um, and in their case, like, it looked like shit. And I was like, why are you actually, like, why do you put that on your car? And they go, because then when I sell it, it'll look nice for the next person. Yeah. So you're willing to sacrifice the look of your car for the whole time you own it. For the future owner who you don't even know who they are, so they yep. can have it looking good, that yep. doesn't make any sense at all. And you know what, math sometimes makes sense when you start thinking about this, because I appreciate some people need maximum resale. Can you chuck us the oil and the, just, the, just the main oil? You can, also, you can also look at how much does it end up costing you per year when you own it. Yeah. Because if you own your car for 10 years and you pay 20 grand for it and then you sell it for 15, that just costs you $500 a year. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's actually pretty cheap if you look at it that way. So I appreciate why people care about the resale, but caring that much where you don't actually put it to use, yeah, I don't know. Not so much into it. Same reason I don't really buy new cars. It's happened once or twice with like the Yaris, so that wasn't brand new. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you remember when we changed the oil on this, even though we make and sell service labels ourselves but haven't used one? Yeah, it was in the last six months, so it's good to go. Okay, because it, it was a tiny bit low, but like only a tiny bit. It actually looked... That's just the... like it looks pretty good. I'm gonna actually write on it somewhere when it was last changed so that we can um we can see. Just the LS leaking horsepower, mate, don't worry. It's perfect. So this pod filter is actually attached to a bit of pipe that was a part of an extraction fan system from a takeaway shop, and that's what that is, and it still lives on, and it's just got a little pod filter on the end. Um, you may have seen recently the battle that we did between ModMax and the Midget. It was spewing out coolant everywhere like this. Rah, rah. The Midget is the winner! <laughs> Look, it happens. It, it, it's, just, it's just this in life, man. Doesn't matter how much you fix it with your General Motors. The winner is the midget, everybody. <laughs> and the problem was, is that this pulley down here was actually rubbing on this part of the coolant hose. So we've actually put a smaller piece on there with a bend, so it actually does have some clearance there now, so it should be fine. Uh, that's been topped up again, so there's coolant in there. 
it's nice and green. Um, the colour of it is not always an indicator of its like efficacy, by the way, so you can get these little coolant test strips if you're not sure. We have changed it fairly recently, and yeah, most of it was on the floor and we've topped it up, but um, just because it's green doesn't mean it's okay. You can get these little tube uh, test strips and you put them in there and they'll give you a colour indicator of whether it's still working or not. All right, that is looking much neater. Put the kick panel back in. ECU's hidden up there, so there's room for feet, dirty feet, and that should solve that. I also noticed that there was a wire missing. I also have a feeling that the thermofan doesn't work properly because part of the reason it overheated was it lost coolant, but also I didn't hear the fan on. So we need to make sure that that's still being triggered because sideways doesn't get a lot of airflow through the front, but when it's stopped, you want the airflow to, to sort of bring it back to temperature. This is a little battery tap that we got from Super Cheap Auto, and we run lots of these on our cars now. Um, so basically, this is a way of just quickly winding on and off the power. So it just means your battery doesn't go dead with cars like this that are stored up for a little while. So it just means when you're working on them, you can just wind that out. It means there's no power connected to anything at the moment. And then when you, when you want it to work again, you wind it on. I won't wind it on because we're about to kind of cut the lights off the top here. Uh, quick tip, if you are making your own convertible at home, uh, the only kind of wiring that's going to go into your roof, or like a minimum, is going to be just a positive and negative that's holding your little courtesy light on. If you do cut that wiring, which Marty and I did, uh, and your battery's still connected, which it was, uh, it's very possible that your car will catch on fire and the fire brigade will be called. How do we know, Martin? Don't worry about it. It was a long <laughs> time ago. Don't worry about it. We're going to take these lights off because it's no longer a security vehicle. Which means this security stick is going off as well. And to make it look nice and uh, nice and sleek. And then we'll put some of our own like Mighty Car Mod stickers on there. Oh, I thought I this was lots of individual pieces, just one sticker, which that's is good. great. I quite like the chop and protect thing. No, that's great. So that to chop stay. and should say to chop and chop again, because this thing just keeps chopping. It's pretty awesome. Um, so it was in its security guard, guys, from the uh, Super Cheap Auto TV campaign, uh, which you can check out. We'll put a link for that down below. Uh, we were also uh, in a recent one for Super Cheap Auto also, which was the Daihatsu Midget. I'll link them down below. There's links down it. there. I'm just doing it. Ready? Are you cutting? Bang! Oh, Martin. Did it get you? No, you didn't get me, but we gotta, you gotta, you got to do this professionally now by twisting and taping that. You know what Twist I mean? the tape the wires together? Yeah, can we'll you tape, tape, tape them yourself? together so that once I actually turn the boost tap back on, that it starts some kind of this fire. This roof is dented from the, um, not from you dancing. I didn't for dance a on it. Yeah, for a change. Oh, I saw last week, sorry to cut you off, um, the owner of Twisted. I saw him again. He Did still you? owns the car. Um, and I said, how's it going? And he goes, the roof. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and then looked at me real, like, dodgy looking. And I was like, was not me? And he's like, we both know it was you. I was like, of course it was me. Uh, anyway, um, he's getting it fixed up. Like, he's getting it properly panelled, like, properly fixed. Like, he's, 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 it's coming back. So, at some point, um, I got his phone number, and I'm just going to have to give him a call and go, hey, man, once Twisted has been retwisted and taped, they should call it and taped. Twisted. Oh, so you mean so too sexy can chop it again? Again. Is that what you're getting at? Like too sexy should be reborn and then should chop your twisted thing? We you, can't you, say this because now everyone's You're, just trying, to, you're just trying to find ways to bring too sexy back. Uh, but this is no Justin Timberlake song, man. <laughs> uh, no, um, anyway, uh, I would love to see too sexy and twisted go at it again. So I would love to see that. And, and I'm not the only one, man. Heaps of people love to see that. But you and I uh, neither have the skill, aptitude or inclination to do that. Yeah, you don't like sex bet cars at all, uh, except so you buy um, them all the time. Has anyone got any sex bet cars for sale? <laughs> Please let us know. I'd love to, no, love to see. No, they them from you. Um, no, I'll, I'll buy them if they're there. Uh, and watch all the ads go up for asking twice as much. I saw another Turbo Civic last week. Was it uh, like $35,000? It was $35,000. Oh, do you see the same one? Probably. All right. If, if you've got sex back and turbo on your saved list, then you and I are probably getting the same things. Uh, Martin, oil good. Coolant good. Battery tap off. Um, security stuff's off. Sticker off this Sticker side. Off that side. And then um, we'll check the tyre pressures. We are going to send them the... Um, Ryobi tyre inflator with it. Uh, because we are sending this car uh, to another state, we've got a little courtesy pack that's going to go with it. Let me, show you what's, uh, let me show you what's in here, starting with the meat tray. So these here are designed for when weather gets bad. Basically, these here just go over this to stop all of our cylinders filling up with water. Uh, some people use tennis balls, but then they get stolen by people that like playing handball. Uh, they don't steal your meat trays. So uh, we have those. Uh, we also have... Um, a tarp as well for... Although that's not really... Send a box of cable ties uh, in there as well, which we've got those. 
uh, Mighty Come Odds gloves that are going with it. There's just a Mighty Come Odds bag that goes with it. We've got some earmuffs. Uh, we do have these because people need to protect their earballs, um, but often people driving this like go, man, it's really loud, or when we pass it to them. So they'll take that. Oh, the chopped gaff tape. Well, the chopped gaff tape, tape is currently, because the truck's going to be here in minutes, is going over that. Uh, so these are microfiber cloths. We'll just have them because it's good to be able to clean stuff up. This is a cool little thing that Super Cheap sent us. Look at this. It's a, uh, in case of emergency, break glass. There's a 10 mil socket in there. Um, actually, I don't know if they'll need the oil thing. And of course, WD-40, because between WD-40 and the gaff tape and your, and your cable ties, that should let you fix pretty much anything. And the other thing I do have to remember to put in that is the oil. I lost the oil. Oh, the oil's over there. Um, so we'll sticker it up. Check the tyre pressures. I just made a dog's breakfast of this. Uh, stick all of that back in the passenger side. And then, Martin, look at that. Is it almost ready? There you go, it's rainproof. That's how we, this is legitimately how we rainproof this thing. Like that. There you go, no water's getting in. It's going to Melbourne, and Melbourne it rains a lot. So it needs to be protected. Uh, we've only just started using these, by the way. These are freaking awesome. We've just been doing the old tip and pray and hope for the best. Um, these here, you can get glass ones, you can get fancy ones, you can get all sorts of different ones. This is just a basic plastic one from Super Cheap Auto. Uh, it's got gauge on the back. Work out how much oil you need, put it in, tip, tip, nice and controlled, no funnel needed, throw that straight in there. Um, all right, that's going in the passenger seat. Stick the bonnet back on. Oh, we need pins, Martin, bonnet pins. What? Oh, they're there. On the, it's a, it is a Nissan. Near the left foot on the passenger, there's pins. Just to work out this demo fan, it is, there's a plug here for it. Might need to be on reds though, Yeah, right? do you want to see if it comes on? Because we want it to be on. Oh, is that what one of these switches is for? No, I don't think so. I mean, try it. Put it back on reds and see. I think that was... Oh, is that what it? No. It's not? Um, there's no problem with the thermofan running all the time, though, if it's only going to be doing skids anyway. It's just noisy, but yeah, it could run all the time. It's just noisy. It's noisy. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I just completely forgot. Yeah. I'm like, I, it'll okay. be so loud. Let's just try something for a second. Pull that off. Pull that one off. Okay. Let's see how loud the thermofan is. Doesn't your fancy watch give you decibel meters? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let does me it? See. Does it? Does oh, yeah, noise. Here we go. decibel noise. thing? It's all, all noise. Right. So, no, I'm not going to start the car. I just want to hear how loud the thermo fan is. Oh, let's get a baseline. So, stop talking. I know that's too difficult for you, but just stop talking for a stop sec. Stop talking? Me? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Wait, wait, ready? 37 decibels. That's about right for background. All right, now let's try. No, no, just the thermo fan. 74. 81. What about this? It must says, be 130. Loud environment. 30 minutes at this level can cause temporary hearing loss. Repeated long-term exposure can... We don't need to know about that. Yeah. Did it tell you how loud it actually was? 105. 105, okay. I think 110 is jet taking off or something. So it's yeah. pretty loud. Dude, we're good. Great. It's got fluid, it's got power steering, it's got brake fluid. It's got... It's this, dude, this thing just works. I mean, I will say this about LS. I know everyone's like, LS swaps are boring. Like, you cannot argue... LS swaps are boring! ...with how... What? Good, reliable, what? and powerful this does. Yes, it doesn't make a thousand horsepower, but the 300 horsepower it does make, it's made non-stop. It just works and turns on and runs, and it's pretty amazing yeah. in well, this chassis. I don't want to jump into the whole, that thing is boring, because I've spoken about this before. If you've never made an apple pie before, and you get grandma's recipe, and you make an apple pie, I reckon that's freaking awesome, and make an apple pie. And if anyone then says to you, I've made an apple pie before, that's boring, that person could get... Seriously, it's about your experience. It's not about everyone else's experience. Yep. Maybe it's boring for them, but not boring for you. That's horses for courses, man. Everyone's into different stuff. Do it your way. Write your own book. All that stuff. Like, just the internet can just be an insidious butthole sometimes, <laughs> spraying its fart at everyone, thinking that we've got to breathe it in. I don't have to breathe it in. I'm holding my breath until I go outside. You know what I mean? I've got to write an instruction manual because the truck, I think, is here. I need to write an instruction manual about how to turn the battery tap on, about the fan, about... Can you help me get the hood on, please? Uh, speaking of which, 
We did a video recently. We do lots of other social medias. There's a TikTok, there's an Instagram, there's a Facebook. There's Facebook, there's all of them. Um, there's but vertical the, stuff going up all the time for you just having a flick and you don't feel like watching a whole video. The Instagram Reels goes berserk. It goes, it goes nuts. absolutely nuts. But we made a video talking about the differences between, like, because we call this a bonnet. And you guys, probably like a third of our audience that's America, you call it a hood. Yep. That's weird. I, I think that's weird. You think it's fine. Oh, but you and call like it a, a trunk, is which, which is what an elephant has on the front, you think is a space in the back. That doesn't make sense either. But we say it's a boot, which is on your foot. Which is on your foot. Which also anyway, makes there's sense. lots of these things going on. And if you want to hear more inanities like that, you can check out the Instagram page. This here, we never really cut it right. So this is something else that you don't get to see normally. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit, probably. It's got to go... That side's got to go on first and back. Yeah. And then that one on and then back that way. <laughs> there we go. Ah. And that goes on. Can we line up? Can oh, you line that up with a little pin? There we go. Then wind that on and throw one of them through it, please, mate. Great. Well, there it is. That was a little something. Oh, we haven't checked the tyre pressures yet. We'll do that. But we'll do that. Uh, that was just a little something of, uh, you know, some of the things that go on behind the scenes when we're making this show. Um, next episode. Fire out, people. Next episode, we have got something that is, um, it's going to blow your wormhole 35 galaxies away. Do you mean that? Or that? Or yeah. that thing? I mean, the... Well, that's actually two episodes away. No, that's more. Uh, but anyway, um, no, we, we've got some mad, um, we got some mad stuff happening. I'm just going to say it. A car that I've wanted for 15 years. We've been making this show for 15 years. Trucks here. Trucks here. All right, uh, it's a car I've wanted for one and a half decades. I finally got one. You will be seeing it. That's the next episode out. Uh, uh, I hope you like it because I like it. It was inspired by our trip to Basin Temple Story. That was it. Uh, if you do want to get a poster. This is your last chance. Uh, by the time you're seeing this video, I reckon you'll probably have like two days maybe to get them before they're gone. It will say that they are unavailable when they're not there. Thank you very much, Martin. I'll put the door up. Martin, good job, mate. I just realised I put these on and now they're going to blow off. Yeah. Well, not anymore. <laughs> All right. See you next time. Bye.